another Friday, another video. Welcome back to this week's episode of Closed by Mo. My name is Mohammed. I am hopefully your favorite YouTube host on most things real estate. I'm also a realtor and an investor based out of New York. And before I jump into anything else, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you just stop and like and subscribe this video, it only takes a couple of seconds and YouTube tells me that if I stop in my video and actually ask you guys to do that, it should really help with the numbers because the more you engage with this type of content, the more likely this content will be recommended to other people that are actually searching for this type of content too. So you never know how many people you might be helping just by dropping a single like. With that being said, I end up working with a lot of first time real estate investors that are looking to buy their first property in New York City or even mainly just house hack. House hacking is when you're living in the property while renting out some of the other empty spaces or empty units. And for a lot of first time investors that are very new to house hacking, it's their first time, you know, not only investing in real estate, but also being a landlord. There's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of anxiety around this. So I thought I'd make a video about the top five bits of advice that I could give to any new first time home hacker. So without further ado, let's jump right into this guys. Now, the first thing that you always wanna consider before even starting to get into house hacking or even investing in your first property is understanding that the area will attract the same type of tenant profile. And what I mean by that is, if you're investing in a not so great area, don't expect to attract superb tenants. Even if you remodel everything in the house, you can't remodel out of a bad neighborhood, right? The reason I say that is because a lot of times with first time, you know, house hackers, you might approach it with a very numbers, uh, you know, numbers first perspective. Now, what I mean by that is of course, you know, homes in areas that aren't super great are a lot cheaper and the returns on them are a lot stronger, assuming you don't have any issues with renting it out for the duration of the, the lease or leases or for however long you own that property but you have to understand that there's a trade-off there. And what I mean by that is, let's say you buy a property that's a lot cheaper in a not so great part of town and you're renting it out, you're gonna run into headaches with that specific tenant or you know tenants that you might place in that home. And that's, you know, there's a lot of non-quantifiable cost associated with that. And I always tell my clients, it's okay to spend a couple of extra bucks to buy a house in a nicer area to have a peace of mind because you would much rather take a little bit of a less return but not have to worry as much about what the tenants are doing in your home or whether or not they're paying their rent on time. And a lot of those factors that come into just being a regular business owner or a landlord, especially if it's your first time investing, I would say value more your peace of mind versus just the return at the end of the day. The second key advice that I would give to all first time house hackers is the loan product you use and the bank that you work with definitely matters because not all banks are created equal, not all loan products are created equal either, especially in a lot of, I would say, um, high price metro areas like New York City. You wanna work with a local bank that understands the fact that the market is you know, more expensive than other markets in the United States and what they'll do to help you out is they'll consider the potential rental income of that property towards your overall approval amount. And what I mean by that is if you're house hacking, you obviously have more than one unit in the property, up to four units, you know, while it's still considered a residential property. So let's say, for example, you have, you know, you're living in the one unit, your bank, assuming they can count the potential rental income, they'll consider what the other units could rent for every month and they'll count that towards your approval or towards your debt to income ratio which would definitely help you out in the long term because otherwise you may not have qualified for that property and of course the loan product also matters because as long as you're house hacking and it's four units or less that is still a residential property and i always recommend my clients to look for programs that offer lower down payments as in the FHA or the VA loan program or any other loan program that you might get if you're in a specialty field like medicine or uh, you know, a special uh, professional services because those programs will help you keep more of the cash in your own bank to use towards remodeling or any other projects that you might want to do to increase the value of the home. Now, the third point, and this is kind of self-serving, is if you are using an agent, make sure that it's someone that's also an investor or someone that also house hacks. The reason I say that is not to, of course, throw shade at any agents that aren't investors themselves and work with investors, but there's just a different level of experience when you work with an agent that has, you know, uh, been in your shoes, is currently in your shoes with house hacking or owns a couple of other properties because they understand what you're looking for and what you're going to prioritize and not prioritize. And they'll also be able to give you advice on what's worked for them and what hasn't worked for them. 
there's also the added fact that if an agent is already an investor and they're house hacking in the area that you're wanting to house hack or invest in, they're gonna already have a network built out of people that they can refer to you in terms of any issues that might pop up. For example, if you need a contractor or a handyman or who should you call if you wanna get you know a couple of different quotes for painting the house. You know, There's a lot of different uh, ways you can get ahead of the learning curve if you're using the right agent. The fourth and I think one of the more important points here is you know, owning a multifamily property and house hacking is a business, so treat it like a business. One of my key bits of advice is I don't recommend renting out any of your properties to friends or family, and always make sure that you have an attorney review any of the leases before you get them both signed. But what I mean by you know treating it like a business is have a system in place. You know, have a system and process in place for different situations that might come up. That way, you're not in a situation where if your tenant says, "Hey, I can't pay rent on time," that you just accommodate them. Whereas you could have said, "Hey." We actually have a lease that's signed by both of us. We have a late fee in there if you're too late on the rental payment, so we have to work something out. It helps to have systems and processes in place, and the only way you can do that is if you treat it like a business and not just a regular home ownership. And it's it's a bit of a mindset shift, but for a lot of first-time investors, I always recommend this, so this way you don't get too anxious or too shy when you need to have these difficult conversations with your customers, which are your, also your tenants. The fifth point when it comes to just advice on house hacking, always look at rental comps before making a decision to purchase or offer a home. The reason I say that is because for a lot of first time house hackers, you might have a misconception of what a particular unit can possibly rent out for. There's a lot of different, I would say, data aggregators online like Rentometer, for example, that will give you an average value of what a rental unit might go for in that area. But the, what I found the best way to you know find out what you could potentially rent out the units for is just look at Zillow, right? See what the other you know apartments that are very similar in terms of amenities, sizes, like bedrooms, bathrooms, aesthetics, visuals, like how well are they painted, are they clean, maintained, uh, is, the, is the best indicator in terms of figuring out what the market price of that rental unit is gonna be. And then I always recommend just you know notching it down maybe $100, $150, just to give yourself a little bit more of a conservative breathing room there when it comes to actually crunching your numbers to figure out if the deal makes sense for you enough to make an offer and buy the property. With that being said, guys, if you made it to the end of this video, I really appreciate it. Again, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, or dislike this video. I had a lot of fun making it. If you have any thoughts on what other videos I should be making, drop it in the comments below, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good one, guys. Bye.